Hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Cryptic and today we've got part three of three um, on modding your Vita and essentially getting it set up for emulation. Um, this step, if you've done the last two, um, one, purchasing a Vita if you believe it was worth it, two, modding it, this part is actually the easiest. Um, because the hard part is essentially done. Um, what we want to do now is essentially set up Adrenaline for PSP and PlayStation 1 emulation. And then we want to set up RetroArch uh, to do everything else. And the Vita can do a lot. Um, I've tested its capabilities on a whole bunch of different uh, sort of emulation of different systems. And I can tell you which uh, one is better to be used for what and why. And we'll go through that. Uh, so first of all, let's start with with Adrenaline. Um, personally, I don't think Adrenaline will be used as much as RetroArch, but it's still very useful. So we will launch Adrenaline. Now, if you're doing Adrenaline for the first time, um, if you're familiar with the PSP, it will go through the PSP startup of setting your region, time, name of device, etc., etc. Once that's all sort of done, um, it will essentially uh, essentially transition to the standard home screen um, as you would be familiar with the XMB layout for the original PSP. Um, cool thing about this here um, is that once you get the game files or however you want to source them, which I will not show in this video for obvious copyright reasons, um, you can play your PlayStation 1 and PSP games straight in this environment. Um, the cool thing is if you get a game down to memory stick and as you can see it's 111 gigs um, this environment reads off the SD to Vita mod that we did in the last video if you go into here um, you can see all the titles at the moment I'm just playing through Hercules reason being PS1 games take a lot larger file sizes than other games to be emulated same with PSP um, PSP not necessarily as much as the PlayStation 1 but in some cases can be um, so I prefer to play these sort of one at a time because uh, they're longer games and that's just my preference but you could load it up with a hundred games if you can fit it and that's your style um, cool thing about this um, this runs perfectly um, which is why the adrenaline app is the best way to run PSP and PS1 games so if we go in here and just launch it um, I'm not gonna have any audio running uh, again for copyright reasons but you can see pretty much it's running silky smooth and you'll have the full controls of the directional buttons, analog sticks if it was supported on the original game on the PlayStation 1. Um, you get the PlayStation logo with the nice sound effect and everything like that, so bring nostalgia to you, um, which is always great. And yeah, you can play all your PlayStation 1 titles on here. Um, they do need to be the correct file format. Um, I'll have that file format up on screen for you guys so you're aware. Um, and you'll also need to find the directory on your PC. Um, it's a hidden directory so you need to enable hidden directory and also go deeper into your windows settings and enable hidden system directories um, reason being is the directory for to have your rom saved and everything pretty much need to be in that hidden directory which it acts like a critical system folder that may or may not affect uh, the operating system of either the device or windows but it won't um, it just treats it that way which is fine and as you can see, when we're playing um, PS1 and PSP, we can take up about, I'd say, 75 to 85 percent of the screen of the Vita, which is really good. Um, the colors pop, the visuals pop. It's it's quite amazing. Um, so let's go straight into start game. Um, you got your cutscenes, which we can skip. Uh, introduction to the first level. Uh, and the cool thing about this, you can do. Um, your saves and everything like you do, like you would if you had a memory card in slot 1 or slot 2. Um, and there you go. Um, all the games, combat, everything just works. And it's awesome. Full 30 or 60 frames, however the game is meant to be run. And yeah, can't really complain in regards to that. Um, quit here. Yes. And that's pretty much done um you want to quit the game yes if you just tap the home button once uh as in the playstation button here it'll get you back out and yeah that's adrenaline pretty much running as you would expect um 
if you double tap that'll get you there and you can just close it off now retro arc which is what most people want to use this will do uh, starting from handhelds to more home consoles, uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, no DS or DSi. Um, there is a standalone emulator for that, but it's nowhere near working on the Vita, unfortunately. Um, it'll do your Nintendo, your Super Nintendo, and your N64. Um, you'll do all your Sega platforms, you will do your Neo Geo, you will do arcades from the 70s, 80s, and 90s and probably a, a whole bunch of others that I have missed. It can read uh, PSP and PS1 games, but uh, RetroArch uses cores. The cores essentially um, determine how well said games will run for audio and video um, and just frame rate. Um, unfortunately, the cores for the PlayStation 1, which is only one, um, doesn't run that well. That's why it's better to run it on uh, adrenaline as opposed to retro arc and same for the PSP. I mean PSP games actually will run just fine um, If you really wanted to but it's just a lot easier running them in the native PSP environment Why would you do the hassle of trying to get them working here? Um, cool thing with this when you first launch it, it'll be in like a list mode um, So basically um, You might not like that. I've got it running in X and B mode. You can change that in the settings um, once you get it saved to that, make sure when whatever you do in settings, I've noticed this error on a lot of YouTube videos, they'll change certain settings, but they'll forget to go to um, and save the save state um, or the configuration file. So configuration file and then save current configuration and get that notification. And they wonder why when they exit out of RetroArch, why does it go back to default? That's pretty much why. Um, the way you get these done is that in, you can create on your UX uh, UXO folder, which is the root folder of your SD to Vita. Um, you create a ROMs file, um, and in the system folder, you uh, put all the BIOSes that you need to get. Again, I won't have long links to any of these. You can source them yourself, easy enough. Um, and then in the ROMs file, you have them titled uh, for the different handhelds and systems. And then you can go into scan directory. Sorry for the noisy car in the background. Um, people still like doing that in the middle of the night. Um, scan directory, um, and then you have UXO, and then I have one called ROMs right there. And in ROMs, you want to, you can go to any directory that you want. So let's just for argument's sake, go to Super Nintendo, um, and you can scan this directory. If you do that, it'll load up, and then all your directories will come like this with all your games. Um, they won't appear at by default with pictures on side to side. You can change that in the settings as well. You can check a box to auto download these and tell it if you want a snapshot or the box art on the left or right or however configuration you prefer. So it does allow a lot of customization. And all these games, they run uh, super cool. Um, if we want to do uh, Super Nintendo here, some Donkey Kong Country run. and it'll run perfectly like it was on a Super Nintendo. Um, you can also sign in to uh, retroachievements.org if you make an account on there and set up retro achievements. Um, certain games like here, this has 71. I've signed in and yeah, as you play the game, they'll pop like you're playing on PlayStation, Xbox or any other platform that allows for achievements. Um, so yeah, that's this going again you can set um filters and screen sizes and rendering types to your preference player yep go perfect run playing Donkey Kong country on the vita and yeah this will be the same for any other of these titles that are all running on here you can play them all enjoy them do your thing and yeah load load up your vita with a billion games um this is why it makes it one of the most if not the most powerful sort of portable um for uh emulation in its class um of course there's other pc more like uh titles that would probably um do things better but considering that the vita is 10 years old um, this is awesome, um, and yeah, really, really cool. So yeah, um, if we hold the start here, 
we can set up shortcuts like this, holding start for three seconds, and that'll bring up the menu, close content, and we're done. We're out of the game. Um, you can do save states, you can do everything. And yeah, fantastic. Um, I did get a question on this. Can the Vita run uh, Android or I uh, iOS titles? Answer is no. Um, if it's been ported as part of the PS Mini titles, then it's already there and you can get it on the package application that's on the Vita, uh, package being right there. Otherwise, um, no, unfortunately not. But if you wanna play all your retro titles or your fun games, um, it's pretty much ready to go. Once you have this thing modded, I will have um, a link to RetroArch in the description below so you can download it and you install it like any of the other apps that you do. Um, load it anywhere on your Vita that you want on the memory card. Um, launch it, it'll ask you, do you want to install? Yes, are you sure? Hell yeah. And then yeah, go from there guys. Um, if this video has been helpful for you and you're having fun playing older games on your Vita, put in the comments down below. If you're having any issues, let me know and I'll help you guys out. Um, but yeah, if it's been helpful, please hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment, share the video and click subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Um, thank you for everyone who subscribed lately and helped us crack 100 subs. Um, never thought that would really happen. Um, here's to another 100 and then to whatever else may come to, uh, to, towards me and the channel. I really appreciate everything you guys have done to watch and subscribe and everything. So yeah guys, I will catch you on the next one. Take care.